Here's another post hoc test. It's pronounced Shadak Bonferroni. And uh, what it does is it's a, a clever way to increase the power of a test after you've already done a regular Bonferroni correction. It's going to be a new test statistic. And of course, you're going to get a new critical value table, which is in the book. There it is right there. Don't be afraid. And of course, there's going to be another new formula, which reads like this. Your new alpha, your new corrected alpha, is going to be 1 minus the quantity of 1 minus the family-wise alpha, your error rate. That's normally just 0.05. Raised to the power of 1 over C is the number of comparisons that you're going to make. And this is how it works. You always set your alpha. We're just going to pretend it's 0.05. You need to find the degrees of freedom from your within group term. And you need to know how many compar comparisons you're planning on making. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll set the alpha level at 0.05. The degrees of freedom we're going to have to look up from our ANOVA source table. There it is. We're using the RAT study again. Okay, so it's 20. And the number of comparisons... Let's just pretend we're going to use 10 because it's so easy to divide by 10. So let's get going. So back to the table. There's the information we need. Alpha, degrees of freedom, number of comparisons. First of all, make sure you're on the right page for the alpha level. Each page has a different alpha level. Degrees of freedom means you go to the 20th row of degrees of freedom. Going this way. And the number of comparisons, that's what, the, that's what the top row here is. So we're in the number 10 column for comparisons. And where they intersect, that's going to be your new critical T value. In other words, when you run a T test between two group means, your calculated T value has to be larger than 3.14 or it's not going to be significant. And there's two different ways to calculate your new alpha level. First one is with the formula. We're just going to go ahead and plug in values. So the original alpha was 0.05. C is the number of comparisons. So let's do some math. Raised to the one-tenth gives us that. Do some subtraction. So that is our new Shidak Bonferroni calculated alpha using the formula, or we can use this table. It's, it's kind of clever the way it's set up. But if you look at it, it says the line of numbers on top here in this green, these are the percentages of the tests. In other words, they're, they're the probabilities, they're the calculated probabilities. And what you do is you simply go from where your row was, right, I'm sorry, where your column was, all the way up to the top, and you read that number right there. It's, it's, it's 0.512. And that's a percent. So we need to change a percent into a regular number. So that looks like the same thing we got from the formula. But what that means is that all the tests will be evaluated at this new level. That's the p-value, right? That's the critical p-value. So any calculated p-value must be less than this number, or you will have not any significance between those tests. So that's, that's the only difference there. So let's compare the Bonferronis. There's the regular Bonferroni. You simply divide the original alpha by the number of comparisons. If you are making more comparisons than there are groups, that's how we got that, so 0.005. And in the Shidak Bonferroni, is what we just did. And you'll notice that they're pretty darn close to each other. Not much improvement, but there is a little. And that's all there is to it. MGZ out.